Hey kids, it's time for another episode of Kitty Cat Gaming with your host, Mortimer! KKG! KKG! Yay! Welcome back to another exciting episode of Kitty Cat Gaming. I'm Susie Mortimer and I'm here with Chris and Corey. Chris is sucking on penis currently. Okay, Chris, like, are oh, you about to oh, beat this guy, right? Oh, oh, oh. Throw bug right, bruiser? Oh, 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 oh my god. <laughs> what? Press, press shift. I shift. Music attack or are meteor you on the avalanche? Second, uh, stage, Chris? Mm -hmm. I'm upstairs. in the mall. Picking my nose. <laughs> Is this like a healing move? Are you excited with all these like combos that you've seen like 18 times? <laughs> <laughs> I still like looking at them because they're pretty. Yeah, no, this game has a very simple oh, charming style. You're about to beat him, man. You he doesn't have much life left. You get way more costumes in the second one. What's your favorite costume? Uh, fucking the Statue of Liberty. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the healing. Does it have a special significance to you up. because you're an uh, alien in this country? No. You're an immigrant? I always thought the Statue of Liberty was hideous. Do you have your Do you have your green card statue status now, Chris? What? Wait, what? Do you have just like a work visa or? Yeah, it only lasts for like three years. So I need to marry someone, so send me in your resumes. <laughs> <laughs> Any eligible Well, now you can marry a dude, so like why don't you have Stamper if he'll just like take, bite the bullet for you. Stamper's and... too ugly for me. Yeah, Stamper has Stamper. You think you could do better than Stamper? Yeah. Stamper's a fucking badass, dude. Stamper has taste. I love Stamper. Oh shit. He doesn't go for Mungo. He doesn't go for big, <laughs> tall, lumbering, pale, disgusting Mungos. idiots. Is that what they're called? Mungos? What the hell is a Mungo? I don't know. From Harry Potter? Mungo? Muggle? I, a Muggle. Muggle. Yeah. I'm not a Muggle. <laughs> well, you're a wizard? Mm hmm. You're a wizard, Chris. You're both squibs. You're shit. a Mungo. Fuck! Penis! Uh, Anyways, since you told me your terrifying story of how you almost fucking got caught in fire in a <laughs> car fire, I'll tell you my story of why I, I'm terrified to drive. It Corey, goes, you tell a story with a happy ending. Okay, it goes back <laughs> to my dad. Okay. <laughs> Shit. Um, my dad is very like hands-on with stuff. Uh -huh. So when he's, when he was trying to teach driving, he, he's not really good at motivational speaking. Oh. And he's really good at screaming and scaring the fuck out of people. Oh yeah, that's what I hear. <laughs> so he was like teaching my sister how to drive and I was in the back. And my sister was driving down a highway that had like this like circle turn. Mm -hmm. Oh, like a roundabout. She'd never seen that before. She had no idea how to react to it and she was freaking out. My dad was screaming and grabbed the wheel and was swerving by cars and shit. And uh, I thought we were gonna die. Cause Jesus. he almost fucking like flipped the car over. Was, Holy shit. And that terrified me. Yeah. And um, there was just tons of times where my dad almost killed us in a car by doing stuff like that. And it was just like, I didn't want to drive because I was terrified. Yeah. The, the idea that one mistake on a highway could be your, the end of your life yeah. terrifies me. Yeah. And that's why um, my driving license has expired because I haven't tried, but I, I do need to try. I just yeah. need to figure out how I would do it. Cause it, I, car, cause it is a phobia of mine. It's something I have to get over mm -hmm. and everybody has to get over driving phobias. Yeah. Cause it is important in life. Everyone I've known has had like a phobia, like, about driving at some point in their lives. Like, I remember Aaron, uh, when he first started driving, he didn't start driving until he was like 18 because uh, he, uh, or maybe 17, because he had a friend who had died in a car accident yeah, and that, that scared him from driving. Be, yeah, right. that's like all you need. We, I actually almost died with my dad on the way back from. Um, cool con. On the way back from, yeah, cool con. Cool con comedy club. Really? <laughs> uh, we, yeah, there was like this comedy club and uh, not to talk, I was 21, uh -huh. we, were, we were both drunk. Yeah. And my dad did the poor thing of driving drunk. That's that's fucking stupid. Yeah. My dad's a fucking idiot. Yeah. And I hate my dad, so there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> there was nothing I could do. I couldn't be like, Dad, call a taxi, because he didn't want to spend any money. And I couldn't be like, Dad, we're fucking 600 miles from home. What are we going to do? Jesus fucking Christ. Instead of just being the, the smart guy, my dad's like a fucking, like, when he drinks, he's like a stupid frat kid, where he's just like, man, I'm, he's like... Man, look at all these fucking hot moms I fuck. Look at all these cougars. Like he's he's like that kind of a douche. He's like a show off, yeah. Yeah, like he talks about all the cougars he fucks, and I'm like, cool, daddy, you fuck moms. Oh my god. <laughs> like, good job. Why do you heal this fucking tire bar? <laughs> oh, one yeah. time, uh, okay, good. One time, my dad was driving my sister and I home from the county fair. We must have been like nine or ten, and uh, we were driving along this country road in Florida, and this guy. I want to say hillbilly, but I don't know if I can say that. And a pickup truck behind us was like insanely drunk. Dirty hick. And like swerving. And my dad was like really pissed about it. Cause he's, he had his two daughters in the car and this yeah. guy was 
day drunk, fucking about to hit the back of the car. So eventually the guy rams into the back of the car. Mm-hmm. And my dad stops the car in the middle of the road. Nobody's out there because we're in the middle of nowhere. And my dad walks around to the drunk guy's pickup, fucking reaches into the car, grabs the guy's keys, throws it into a cornfield, comes back to our car and drives away. <laughs> leaving that guy in the middle of the road. My dad is such a fucking badass. That is fucking amazing. Oh my yeah. god. My dad. My dad would probably have done the same thing if he was, because my dad's kind of scary like that. Yeah. Like if you if he if somebody was to threaten us and we were in the back of his car, he would probably chase them down, and he would not stop running. Yeah. He would he would, he would find them, and when they stopped <laughs> and ran out of breath, he would still be running, like a fucking Olympic runner, yeah. just pissed off after him. Like my dad's a giant asshole. But he's really weird about like being protective and still yeah. being an asshole. It's so bizarre. Like, yeah, he cares about you in his own way. Yeah, like he, he shows it in a weird way, but yeah. he's there. I, it's not so much that I don't like my dad. It's more or less the line that I don't care about the stuff he did before. It's just really weird shit he's done growing up. Mm-hmm. It's more around the line that I just don't have any relationship with him. I yeah. haven't known him for like seven years, and he has like what? some Russian wife in Florida. Doesn't with your his, sister get along more with him kids. now? Yeah, my sister gets along because she worked with him. And uh, oh. while I was living here in Philly, so she actually talked to him, and I, I've just never really had a relationship with him in that regard. So she's way more social. But anyways, uh, I didn't tell you the part where we almost got a car accident. So we were driving, and he was drunk, and he was like blaring fucking comedy stuff on the speaker. So <laughs> I, w- I was tired because I drank. So I was I was kind of like lazy eyed laying down, and my dad was also doing the same thing. Falling asleep. While driving. Yeah. Uh, so he was like, uh, hit the gravel and he'd come back on the road. And I'm like, Dad, fucking pay attention. He's yeah. Like, I know it's hard at this point because you weren't smart to begin with, but uh, just pay attention. And he's just like, I got it. That I is the fucking it. worst. How are you alive right now? I don't know, but we went into a ditch. Like, I was asleep and then suddenly I felt the fucking whole car tip. And I was like grabbing onto the seat or whatever I could. And then we went up like one of those like fucking, like, because there was a ditch in the middle of the road. We went up and there was a giant rock pillar right there that we were going to crash into. But then he fucking came back up on the road. He like hopped up on the road and like I was literally like 30 feet from hitting a fucking rock. A Holy giant shit. boulder in the middle of nowhere. Did he decide to like fucking pull over and sleep or did he make it home? Um, He, he like pulled back on the road and he started laughing hysterically. Well, I was like, like I was like freaking out. I was like, what the f- I was like so terrified. Yeah. And then he was just like, oh, it's fine. We did it. We made it through it. My dad's weird like that. Like, he, he, he kind of likes living life on the edge. Like, I remember one time me and my sister were just asleep in a Jeep and he just had the bright idea. To, he saw a four wheeler ramp and he just fucking pulled off to the side and ramped the four wheeler. Four wheeler. Four wheeler ramp. He ran his car up a four wheeler ramp. F- what you're not supposed to do because it's a Jeep. Yeah. And we, I fucking like. Almost, you were airborne. Yeah, I hit my like mouth. Like Dukes of Hazard. Yeah, and I got like a big lip because it like I, I hurt it. Oh, and my geez. sister hit her fucking head and had like a gouge in her head. Holy fuck! And we like landed and we were like bleeding and dazed and, and like <laughs> freaking out. And he was like, "Wasn't that fun?" <laughs> <laughs> Your dad is so irresponsible. He's a psycho. Holy shit! He doesn't know better. There were times where oh sorry, I keep hitting the fucking mic. Sorry. There were times where he would actually. Like, oh, I love this part where you, like, go into, like, places and they give you candy and shit. Yeah. That's so cool. Who's this fool? Oh, there's a green chest. Customers. Oh, cool, new stamps. Hey, Chris, do you have any, like, crazy driving stories? I can't drive. Have you ever been in a car that was something crazy happened? experiences with friends who have driven? Oh, yeah, what about your friend, uh, was it, it's not Jack. Well, Patty, who can't ca- drive. Well, He's like, I was in a car going to a party and, uh, we were all, like... Being drunk, including the driver. Get the he, get the job. He, he steered off the road and onto the, like a field. He crashed into a tree. Get and, the jawbone of the wolf. And everyone died except for me. Put that for. Uh, I don't the, believe that story. The strongest. Um. Okay. Also, hold on. Let me see. Poison effect attacks apply. Poison's always a good thing. One time uh, I was driving TV and I became my superhero. And stuns to a single enemy for two turns. Toilet paper is a really good one. I remember using that a lot. That pisses me off now, Corey. Because that means you can TP ability. One time I was driving. You have a new ability. <laughs> one time I. What was it? Where do I go? Why were you driving, Chris? I was driving my dad bananas! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, you good tough pieces. What is this shithole? You gotta get the candy. Is this like a store? You yeah. found a kid. I did find a kid. What is this fool? Dude, this is music from Psychonauts. Is it? Maybe yeah. it's because you're wearing the astronaut suit? Go into it, go into it. Fuck Psychonauts! Listen. I'm kidding. 
Is it by the same people? Yeah, that's the campground. I was, uh, dude, I beat fucking Psychonauts 100%. Everyone keeps saying to play Psychonauts. Barry thinks I'm gonna really love the Black Velvet level. He like made me watch like a video on it. Oh it looks God. so cool. Black Velvet, it's a fun level, but Psychonauts is fun when you play it leisurely. If you're going through all, for all the like uh, fragments of the memory, imagination, mm. it fucking sucks. It's yeah. the worst thing ever. Finding those little pieces of things you see, Psychonauts is a really good game. It's I keep hearing that. One of my favorite double fun games, absolutely. Um, Whoa, the garlic candy! Ah! I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm the kind of person who too would also like a Psychonauts 2. Yeah. Because like Psychonauts 1 was amazing. Are you and guys... I honestly think if, Ooh, if I can chest, be... Chris. What? It's in his mouth. If, oh. I, if I can be Jess, I would prefer Flip. if uh, he was actually making a Psychonauts over the point and click game he's working on because I'm no. not... I mean, I like point and click games, but I'm way more of a fan of Psychonauts. Yeah. Psychonauts was fucking insane. It was are, such a good idea. Are you excited for ukulele? Absolutely. Yeah. I was a huge fucking Banjo Kazooie fan back yeah. in the day. I'm really excited for ukulele. Fucking uh, rare was like my childhood, man. Like w once I got an N64 and I played Mario 64, I was like, I'm probably done with the N64. And then I got Banjo Kazooie. Yeah. And then I got Donkey Kong 64. Donkey Kong Country was <laughs> amazing. I yeah. played the game so many times when I was a kid. Yeah. And, and when you get Donkey Kong 64, you're just like blown away by how much shit you yeah. can do. And then and then I got Conquerors Bed for a day, and it solidified rare in my yeah. life. But then I, um, you know, I played their go, other Chris, games, go. and I did not like their other games. Yeah. Like, like I did not like Viva La Pinata. Oh, yeah, I tried to get into that. I really tried. You that? Yeah. Weird. Viva La Pinata is like, it just feels like, what, what's that game? Um, Harvest Moon? Yeah, it's kind of like Harvest Moon. Yeah. It's kind of like Harvest Moon Animal crossing -y, but exactly. it's just, it's like missing the fun part. You, you build the things to bring the, the yeah. pin pinatas to come in. I just never had fun with that idea, but... I guess the game I kind of li liked back then was Grabbed by the Ghoulies. Partially. I kind of liked it. I liked the music and I liked how some of us played, but I, the way the combat was was fucking stupid. It was like on a joystick. Yeah. And you had to press up on the D-pad to kick. Uh, and you walk around like a, that's a, weird. Like a fucking klutz kicking yeah. like a Frankenstein asshole. <laughs> and you look stupid. And it was just like, it was such a bad game twist. Like, I think they tried to make it because, you know, I guess they think like brain dead babies were going to play the game that just think like... They fucking like slap the controller and like yeah. do kicks because they could have just made it A button or something or B. Yeah, or why anything. make it the up button? That's usually like jump or it's, like it, it was, move forward. It was a really bad game design choice in my opinion, but uh. um, I love the aesthetic of this place. It looks like a real mall, like at Halloween and shit. Yeah, it's cute. All right, well, uh, next time on another episode of Kitty Cat Gaming, we're going to keep playing this game. We're going to keep watching Chris play. Maybe we can get Chris to tell a story to us. Uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you guys don't miss it. And we'll see you guys all next time. Bye. Bye.